Hello, everyone, and welcome to one of the biggest episodes of AEW Dark Ever. I'm Excalibur, joined as always by Taz, and we have two huge main event matches. The Bastard Pack makes his first defense of the AEW All Atlantic Championship against Shota Umino, and a high stakes AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator match. Thunder Rosa goes one on one with Tokyo Joshi Pro's Miyu Yamashita. Special single match. This match, a special presentation in conjunction with our partners Tokyo Joshi Pro in Japan. This event taking place this past weekend at their Summer Sun Princess 2022 event at the Oda City Gymnasium. And a pretty high stakes matchup for this woman, Miyu Yamashita, known as the ace of Tokyo Joshi Pro, fans of uh, AEW Dark Elevation may have seen her compete in tag team action just about a month ago, but here tonight, Taz, she has an opportunity, an AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator. If Yamashita is able to defeat Thunder Rosa, she will get a shot at the championship. Exactly, Excalibur, massive opportunity right now for this young lady, Yamashita, massive, massive opportunity in her home country. You could sense in her eyes as she walked out, there's some pressure on her. But I got a feeling she's going to step it up and put up a hell of a fight against an excellent champion. Yeah, Yamashita, she has held the Tokyo Joshi Pro Princess of Princess Championship on three different occasions. If you're not a regular viewer of Japanese professional wrestling, you may be curious as to the, the crowd situation here in Japan. The local regulations here in Tokyo ask that all live events still are socially distanced and the patrons ask to mask up. So still some regulations in place, a different atmosphere than we're used to, but nonetheless, a very exciting atmosphere surrounding this AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator match. And here we have the AEW Women's World Champion, Thunder Rosa, who's been on an incredible roll as of late at the Forbidden Door pay-per-view event. She successfully defended at AEW Women's World Championship against Tony Storm. And then we saw last week on Dynamite teaming up with Tony Storm as Thunderstorm. And those two were successful in their tag team debut, Taz. Yes, correct. But right now, as we know, it's one on one. You are, you know, in a ring in foreign land right now. You're in Japan with that AEW Women's World Championship. And you have super tough competitor that you're about to be across the ring from. I feel like Excalibur is going to be a hell of a match here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Miyu Yamashita, she has a Kokushin karate background as well as mixed martial arts training, which, you know, so I think her grappling could help counter Thunder Rosa's MMA experience, but the karate is such a, such a question mark. You know, Taz, every time, you know, when you're, when you're the champion, you always have a target on your back. But, you know, especially when you're walking into another person's house, Thunder Rosa's walking into Yamashita's house, and with a shot at the championship on the line in this matchup, this is going to be a tough one. Yes, it is. But Rosa, very experienced professional wrestler, very experienced athlete, and uh, I definitely think she's up for the task. And she's, listen, we've seen Thunder Rosa in AEW. She's uh, respected immensely amongst the fan base all over the world, not just AEW fans, and, you know, and our AEW roster, male and female. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's awesome to go, you know, outside of your comfort zone into another country and, def you know, defend the championship or wrestle there, not just defend. This is not about the AEW Women's World title right now, as we know, Excalibur. Not at all. And so, I mean, this is, uh, you know, the interesting thing about this match is Yamashita extremely focused. Thunder Rosa, she's competed in Tokyo Joshi Pro before. This is a return for her. And, I mean, this is Yamashita's home. And, uh, you know, I think Yamashita may be looking at this as, you're going to come in here and make an example out of me over my dead body. Right, I agree. Trying to go for a go behind right there, Yamashita was, but nice arm bar. Switching into that hammerlock, and now we see it's tough to see with the lighting. That looks like uh, Aja Kong, yeah. Aja Kong, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't have enough lighting on her. It's tough to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so the shadows. 
Well, Tess, Tess, why'd they put the camera on her, but not on us? I mean, we made the trip I over know. here to Tokyo, and then we're going, <laughs> and then we're going to Sheffield after this. Hey, we're busy. We're racking up the miles, but right now, risk control by Thunder Rosa on Yamashita, and good switch on that two-on-one here by this young lady. Excellent. Yeah, you see Yamashita keeping Thunder Rosa's wrist very close to her jaw, but Thunder Rosa a drop to hold, and now almost uh, like a calf slicer there. Sure thing, front face lock. Good traditional front face lock always does a trick. Nice sit out into the switch. And another switch there by Rosa. There's a sit out again by Yamashita. Yep, yep. Yeah, Thunder Rosa rolling through and now back into the hammer lock behind Yamashita. She has the half Nelson as well. Yeah, controlling the, as you know, both wings right there. Tried to arm drag out of it. Yamashita gets that arm bar. And notice how Thunder Rosa was bridging up on the back of her head, trying to keep her shoulders off the mat to prevent the uh, the pinfall attempt by Yamashita. Good grip right there, and a gable grip on that bat hug in the ropes by the AEW Women's World Champion, Thunder Rosa, who, who has, you know, trained in the background in MMA as far as mixed martial arts, grappling and jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. So, Let's see how much striking or grappling gets. We saw a lot of grappling, I should say, but striking. Let's see if this turns into that. Yeah, I mean, the, definitely uh, with the karate background, that may tend to favor Yamashita, but the arm drag there by Thunder Rosa, and oh, Thunder Rosa went for the, another arm drag, rolls up Yamashita. One, just a one count from referee Matsui, who longtime fans of DDT and Tokyo Joshi Pro, the cover here may recognize Yukonori Matsui. And now deep arm drag there from Yamashita and a stalemate here in the early goings. That's how Rosa waits, right? She doesn't rush into nothing. She understands, hey, you got the better of me right there in that exchange. And, you know, Thunder Rosa and Yamashita. Ooh, the kicks. Intercepted there by Thunder Rosa, boot to the midsection. And there's the drop to the knees and the right hand. Homage to Thunder Rosa's mentor, Dustin Rhodes. And now Thunder Rosa charging out the uppercut. Yeah, a snap mare. There may be a round kick coming. Oh, something else. Oh, clothesline there. Riding Lariat and into the cover. Yamashita able to kick out. Yeah, I was going to say that these and you two, see, yeah, these two crossed paths yeah, yeah. in in Thunder Rosa's original time she spent in in Tokyo Joshi Pro, but Mio Yamashita has really come into her own and become a top-notch, world-class competitor in the kick across the spine to the AEW World Champion. Yeah, and that pissed off Rosa. She gets herself a snap mare and a round kick of her own to the spine. And Yamashita though, back up to her feet. The snap, man, and the kick again. I'm not sure this is a road Thunder Rosa wants to travel down, but nonetheless, oh, the karate, yeah, no, you're right, with the karate background. Oh, but again, that works there for Rosa. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Thunder Rosa's Muay Thai background, so she could throw those kicks, but Yamashita, boom, just really laying in with that one. Yeah, Yamashita, great job. Again, that strong round kick. Used her hip while she brought the kick, which is the key. Uh-oh, look at that Rosa, good strength. Now Thunder Rosa with the far leg hooked. Two count. And uh, it's interesting to note, Taz, that it was Thunder Rosa that opted not to continue exchanging kicks with Yamashita. Yeah, that was smart. Better remove, she's a champion for a reason, Rosa. And you could also, I want to point out the cardiovascular abilities here. We're seeing those elbows of Rosa, man. She's not even Excalibur. She's not even sucking wind at all during this thing. Not at all. And now it goes into a cover after the elbow strikes to the jaw. Telling you from experience, you know, wrestling a lot years ago for myself in Japan and going, you know, flying and getting jet lagged for those first few shows and getting acclimated to the time in the beginning of the tour was always tough. Rosa, fresh off a plane, and she looks great. Yeah, Thunder Rosa's been in town for, uh, in, in Tokyo for less than 36 hours before stepping into the ring. And there we see Yamashita firing in right and left kicks to the torso in the back of Thunder Rosa. One, two. Thunder Rosa able to kick out. Yeah, strong kicks. 
Again, we pointed out her striking karate abilities and brings that hip knee attack to the midsection. Another round kick, another round kick. Look at this. Yeah, Miu Yamashita, her, her preferred finishing technique is the skull kick. It's just a, a, a reverse heel kick or a back heel kick similar to what Malachi Black uses. And it's, uh, you know, somebody, Yamashita, oh, cover here, one, two. And Yamashita is somebody that's actually earned the respect of Malachi Black for her kicking prowess. So, you know, I mean, if, if, if he, that, that does not come easily, Taz. No, no, not for, uh, for sure with a guy like Malachi, an athlete like him, maybe going, she got a gut wrench into a gut buster. A lot of pain in Rosa's face. And now Yamashita maintaining control of the body of Thunder Rosa. Oh, Thunder Rosa, the Tijeras reverses it, and Yamashita sends spilling to the outside. Great core strength right there by Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa now charging in the drop kick. Damn. That was coming in hot. <laughs> and now the action spilling to the outside. You see the uh, the junior wrestlers of Tokyo Joshi Pro surrounding the ring as uh, as ringside attendants to make sure that the the action, if it does spill towards the crowd, that everybody's everybody in the audience is safe. And. Now you must have just driven spine first into the ring apron. Yeah, you can see this is where someone like Thunder Rosa thrives, but you got to be careful. Man. Oh, 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 what a kick by Amelia Masta. That young lady has got just power in her kicks, man, from her quads, her calves, the tibia bone, everything, just how quick her feet are. Excellent. Uh, Yamashita, her moniker, the pink striker. If you didn't know why before, you know now. She can throw those kicks with the best of them. And right now, Thunder Rosa in serious trouble as Yamashita covers the far leg, or hooks the far leg. Thunder Rosa able to kick out. Well, this is that kind of, if you had a pick, you know, who's in the lead if you were keeping score on this thing? I mean, I, it's kind of like evened up, Excalibur. I, I, I don't know if you feel different. It no, kind of seems like it's even. Yeah, my scorecard would be even thus far, but Yamashita now in control. But Thunder Rosa, you can never count her out. I mean, that's why she's the AEW Women's World Champion. Well, she didn't get all that throw right there. She tried to bring that hip across while she had the head and arm locked up. Almost like a cobra clutch, kind of. Yeah, it's almost like a front-facing cobra clutch. As Thunder Rosa, though, in serious trouble. Thunder Rosa forced to crawl from the ropes to, to get the break. Interesting that Thunder Rosa didn't have a counter for that, Taz. No, you're right, but as you know, sometimes that is a counter. A rope break, you know, works. I mean, but I get, I get your drift. And now you see Rosa fighting out here with those elbows. Uh oh, watch out. Mashta, a kick to the midsection, went for the high roundhouse. Thunder Rosa, the boot and the stunner by Thunder Rosa. Well, Rosa is firing up the AEW Women's World Champ. You can sense the energy of the crowd, our audience, live audience here. You can hear them. Big time Lariat in the corner, and now Thunder Rosa. Follows oh up God. with the driving knee strike. Right to the face. Oh, Thunder Rosa is not done yet. The drop kick. It's, I mean, we call it a drop kick in the ropes, Taz, but it's almost just like a stomp, a double stomp. It's exactly what it is. Oh, 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 oh. Thunder Rosa bringing the heat, and now Northern Lights suplex. One, two. No. Almost, yeah, almost got it right there. Underhook with that throw. Northern Lights, even though the hands aren't clasped, it's still in Northern Lights. Uh, it was a good job, good bridge uh, by Rosa. And a testament to the toughness of Miyu Yamashita, who, as we mentioned, this is an AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator match. If Yamashita scores the victory, she will receive a title shot at Thunder Rosa in the future, perhaps even on American soil. Well, if if she could keep striking with Rosa like this, that might happen. These forearm shivers by these two ladies are nasty. Thunder Rosa. And now Yamashita with the series of strikes. Thunder Rosa, the quick step behind. The Cazadora rolls through Yamashita, and there's the double stump. 
Yamashita ate it right there. Rosa might get the win here, Excalibur. The cover, the far leg hooked. Again, Yamashita able to kick out. And Taz, you were talking about cardiovascular conditioning. Every time you get kicked in the chest, in the back, every time somebody stomps on your chest or your back, your, your lungs basically deplete, and it takes you out of your breathing rhythm. You gotta refill them. Yeah. Oh, you're exactly right. It's a good way to break it down. You're perfect on that, man. It's it's hard, but I'll tell you, I think Rosa's cardio is great. As is, oh, look at that extension and flexibility in the legs there. The roundhouse kick lands on Thunder Rosa. Now Thunder Rosa back up to her feet in the center of the ring. Yamashita, big front kick, just flattened Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Steady die to kicks throughout this match by Yamashita. Can she keep on bringing that? Rosa, what the hell? Wow. Oh, I oh, see mouthpiece Jones. All right. Bringing out the mouthpiece, and now Thunder, oh, the round, oh, Thunder Rosa caught the kick. And now overhand chops and elbow strikes by Thunder Rosa, but Yamashita's right back up to her feet. Oh, damn. Jeez. Oh, my God. And Yamashita, the pump kick, Sent Thunder Rosa back, and now Thunder Rosa up in the ropes, maybe. Ooh, just a toe kick to the midsex. That was nasty. Now, Fireman Carey here. What is Rosa going to do here with Yamashita? Oh. Death Valley driver, center of the ring. Thunder Rosa looking for the victory here. The cover. Oh, Yamashita able to kick out. Super close right there. What a battle this has been so far. Yeah, I thought. I thought Mio Yamashita was, had the clear and uh, way striking advantage, but Thunder Rosa, our AEW Women's World Champion, hanging right with her. Yeah, and our live audience here really getting into this. Why not? This has been phenomenal. Rosa's saying this is it. Yeah, she's looking for the Fire Thunder driver, Yamashita. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Floats out, and there it is, the skull kick right on target. Mio Yamashita shot. shot. Gonna score an upset here. Two. No. Oh. Wow. Smart by Rosa, realizing where she was, but that kick definitely knocked her loopy. And Miyu Mashta not done yet. Bringing the AEW Women's World Champion up to her feet, looking for a German suplex. Kazadora. Oh, tempo. she's gonna get it. Yeah. What a German by Yamashita. Two. No. Super crazy hard to do a throw like that. But now yeah, look at this. Now hoisting up Fireman Carry. Look at this. And Yamashita likes to use the attitude adjustment, but instead the roll up the inside cradle. Yamashita. Tilt, one, little tilt. two, little three, tilt. one. Oh. Oh, Yamashita. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Oh man, dude, this is nuts. Miyu Yamashita has just pinned the AEW Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa and earned herself a shot at the championship. It was just a simple tilt. She shifted her weight while Rosa had the pin cradle. And that's sometimes how it happens. And it's everything's so tight. Your body, every limb by both athletes are tight. It's tough to kick out. Great job. Oh, you watched the like, That's wild, man. Well, Thunder Rosa, our, our champion, admitting that she got bested here tonight, but maybe next time Mew Yamashita might not be so lucky. But nonetheless, Taz, we have a rematch to look forward to. And then when they meet again, the AEW Women's World Championship will be on the line. I'll tell you what, sign me up. I think I can speak for you. Sign you up, and our whole fan base is going to love that. These two ladies have a chemistry. And Rosa, knowing how she is, she's tough. She's not going to want to go out of here with that loss and not give that girl another shot, or a shot, I should say, at the championship. Well, congratulations to Mew Yamashita, victorious here tonight on AEW Dark. And we'd like to thank our partners at Tokyo Joshi Pro for sharing this match from their Summer Sun Princess 2022 event. And look forward to many more collaborations with Tokyo Joshi Pro in the coming months and years. 
Congratulations again to Mio Yamashita, victorious over Thunder Rosa here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow on TBS, it's the start of the epic two-week event. The Clash of the Titans, here we go. Don't miss Fighter Fest Week 1. A three-way tag team title match. You guys versus you guys versus the Young Bucks. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS. Oh my God, is that private party? Yeah, let's go. The opening contest is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 mini time limit. Introducing first at a combined weight of 381 pounds, the team of Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy. Horizon! Now, Taz, I don't know if you know this, but earlier today, Martin Gwen and Isaiah Cass, they went over to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and they demanded shots of Butterbeer. Well, I've heard that happen. Uh, I've also seen what they did at the corner store that was selling brewskis, as some kids call it. Uh, that was a whole... Kids these days. That was... That was a whole nother story, because I was there getting some licorice. You know, I'm on this diet where I just take in sugar. I lost all this weight. That's all I take in this sugar. Speaking and of sugar. And opponents got a combined weight of 699 pounds. Bear Bronson, Bear Boulder, Bear Country. Oh, buddy, you know, a lot of comments about you online, next Calvin. Last week, all the baby bear, Bubba baby bear talk, the Bronson, Bear, Boulder, Jones, everything. You were out of control with that. Well, Taz, I think you were the one that was suggesting that they get a bear cub to come with them to the ring. And and and, you know, please, this is not, we're not talking about uh, an actual bear cub. You know, it's uh, the, no, it's just, it's fictional. The, the, the food costs alone well, no, on, listen, on a bear you, cub is just prohibitive. Oh no, it's insane. Yeah, you just give them tuna fish. But here's the thing, like we get what you call a cub, I call a baby. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference here. So, you know, just so you know. I don't say cub because of the mess. But here we go, a little tag team action. Private party against, look at, I'll tell you, Bear Bronson right there. He's definitely cut a lot of weight. He looks, he's in great shape, man. He looks excellent. He certainly is. That I mean, that, that rope chain around his neck used to be a choker. <laughs> he's got the rope chain, bro. Danny Terrio. <laughs> like he's in, he's the only bear that's in Bensonhurst. Uh, anyway, that's Brooklyn for you people that don't know what Benson Hurst is. You people. I love it. Well, right now, Bear Bronson and Isaiah Cassidy starting things off, kicking us off here tonight on AEW Dark. Cassidy rolls underneath and... And uh, Cassidy trying to make Bronson flinch, but Bear Bronson... Yeah, it's hard to do. Oh, face first. You know, I just thought I had this epiphany here, Excalibur, right here on Dark in this episode, episode 152. You know, oh, man, nice squisher there. You know, I was thinking, ah, if Bear Bronson keeps getting in this great shape, he's not really going to be a bear anymore. Uh, uh, what, what would he be then, an otter? No, he'd just not be a bear. Oh, okay. Oh. You know, like, just be a, just a tough wrestler. That's what he would be, I guess. Chop to the chest. Well, he'd still have the bear paw tattoo on his shoulder, though. And a right hand Ooh. followed up by Bronson. Well, maybe he went the baller. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, oh, oh, that spine busted. Wait, so otters are from the bear family? Uh, you know what, Taz? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do your own That's research. That's a no. Uh, and uh, shots, 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 shots. Sorry. Um, it was weird watching Bear Bronson do shots with the gold chain, with the rope chain, bro. He's in the club. That's right. Yes. <laughs> he's uh, uh, he's at the booth next to Private Party, and uh, oh, Isaiah Cassidy slips out behind, makes the tag. Uh -oh. To Mark Quinn and oh, Quinn gonna have to contend with Boulder of Bear Country. Big Boulder, big Boulder, bad man, bad bear, I should say. But, uh, Quinn rethinking Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, I'm not sure wants to. He's very slow to get up on the apron. I don't, I don't think he wants to be tagged in quite yet. But and I hope. side headlock taken by Mark Quinn. We are Mark Quinn. Who's scared? He's not scared. Mark Quinn's not scared of Bear Bronson. And, uh, oh, I should say Bear Boulder. Well, he's not. He's not scared of either of them, Taz. And uh, 
uh, you can see see there Mark Quinn actually dipped his uh, dipped his lower jaw in, uh, in in glue and then went rolling around in lawn clippings, <laughs> or put his face in the bowl of a porta potty. <laughs> I mean, what he does on his off time, Taz is uh, wow, bare boulder. That's a yam bag lift. Rare do you see a boulder yam bag lift. Uh, I mean, would you call that a, a double boulder holder by Bear Boulder? Oh, you just taught me. <laughs> Check, please. That was great. <laughs> Oof. That was good. Oh, man. Look at the power of this guy. The monstrous, monstrous Boulder Jones. Look at him. Oh, they, they, well, Quinn oh. just collapsed center of the ring after that assault for Bear Boulder. And Boulder celebrating uh, already, but you know the match isn't over yet. We've seen we've seen private party. You've tests. been you've been you've you've been in a porta potty, right? You know the blue stuff, right? I, I do. Yes, I've, 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 yes, Tess, I've been in a porta potty. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you. That. Okay. I mean, it's shots. It's shots. Shots. Now, now it's confirmed. There is no question. Uh, uh, let the record show that Excalibur has been in a porta potty. Yes, no, it's true. And they're always hot and muggy. That must be a bitch with that mask. Watch out. Oof. Terrible, terrible. Swing and a miss there by Bronson. Back elbow by Boulder. And Isaiah Cassidy grabbing the boot of Bronson. And now the, oh, wait a second. Oh, silly string, silly string, silly string. Silly string right there on Bear Bronson. Private party's going to steal it right here. Two, no. I came out of nowhere, Excal, but that silly string was well done. And a lot of times they won a match on that, but not this time. Yeah, Bear Bronson, that's a testament to his toughness, is now Mark Quinn with the front face lock and the tag it's made tag. by Isaiah Cassidy. Yeah. Sorry, I, I slipped into doing play by play there. Last what? thing I wanted to do. Yes. I mean, one, one, one day, one day, you'll, you'll learn the, the rules of the booth. <laughs> True. This is true. Well, I'll figure it out. And then maybe I'll tweet about it. Anyway. <laughs> Tess, please, please sit down. You're too animated right now. <laughs> I'm jumping up and down. I'm acting like a fool. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, jump up and down. <laughs> Big elbow oh drop there by Mark Quinn. Well, I thought we were at least going to get three matches in before we got to that. Yeah, I know. Not even, not even to the first match. Oh, look at Boulder. Oh, he was wanting to come in there and get a, get a piece of Isaiah. Starting tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central, live on TBS. The biggest four-night pro wrestling party of the summer. Kicks off with AEW Dynamite. Fighter Fest night one. Live from Savannah, Georgia. Tomorrow, 8, 7 Central on TBS. Huge night of action ahead. Triple or nothing for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. The Young Bucks put the titles on the line against Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee, Ricky Starks, and Powerhouse Hobbs. Plus, old friends, now bitter rivals, Claudio Castagnoli, Jake Hager go one-on-one. -on -one. Anna Jay takes on the professor of professional wrestling, Serena D. Plus, we will hear from Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. We'll be in action tomorrow night on the first night of Fighter Fest. Shoulder blocks really hit its mark as you see Private Party here singling out Bronson, Bear Bronson in that corner. And really getting on a pretty good referee, Mike Posey, trying to stop that, but you got to be careful there, Mike Posey, because Mark Quinn can be a little sketchy at times. Yeah, Private Party doing a good job of neutralizing the size advantage of Bear Country just by, you know, taking advantage of the referee's position or lack thereof. Took the leg out right there. A really tough shot in the knee. Another shot to the knee of Bronson. Bear Bronson. Look at Isaiah in the middle of that. He's doing that little funky dance he does. A little hip-hop uh, type of jumping foot thing he does. Well, I mean, I was just going to call him stomps to the knee. But, you know, I mean, still, if you... He did a little, he did like a little, like a little... When I say hip-hop, I don't mean the genre of, mu genre of music. I mean hip-hop like a... Like he jumped up with his hip and he hopped. Like a yeah, legitimate no, hip hop. But understood. Yeah, yeah. This is hip. He I'm is, not uh, talking about like Travis Scott or like Jay Z. They're two different generations, but you, you get it. I said Jay Z because you're a little bit older. Yeah, thank you, so Jazz. You I appreciate it. that. Dumbing it down for me. Uh, no, I was going to say Isaiah Cassidy and his hip dysplasia is very well known. Right. And uh, now Bear Bronson able to. 
to lay in shots to both members of Private Party. Not the type of shots they like, but they stopped right. in the midsection. Oh. Meeting of the minds there by Private Party. Back elbow. Oh. The boot caught, and Gwen oh. gets flattened out, and so does Isaiah Cassidy. Excellent by Bear Bronson. He's got to try to get the big boulder in this thing here. Can he get there? Bronson making the crawl. Boulder fresh on the apron. And the tag is made. Shoulder tackle. And the lariat by Boulder. And the scoop and the slam for Cassidy. The scoop and the slam for Quinn. Big landing from such a big dude, man. He's so tall and big and strong. Oh. Splash in the corner. Quinn sent. Oh, Quinn hung on to the to the ropes. The Gamagiri Ga blocked there by Boulder. Oh, Taz, this does not look good for Private Party. No, Isaiah is in a bunch of trouble. Watch out! Oh man, how strong! That is so impressive by Boulder. Boulder carrying both members of Private Party, and then just the fallaway slam. Oh, that was close. Isaiah Cassidy is super tough. Yeah, that was impressive. You're right, the kick out by Isaiah. Very impressive. Such a huge man on that double team maneuver. Well, it was, it was a double team. It was one guy on one team. Oh, the, the fall away slam, like almost like a Samoan drop. It was two things at once. Now Bronson's tagged in, but he's got a messed up paw. What does it say? A wheel, a leg. I don't know what a leg of a bear is called. I, I think they still call them legs. His leg is hurt. Thank you, Taz. Great analysis. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> and now the... Oh, oh the, the senton interrupted, or excuse me, the cannonball in the corner, interrupted by Mark Quinn. Quinn now tagged in as the legal man, along with Bronson, but the boss man slam from Bronson. Excellent right there. Good job by Bear Bronson. Maybe get a cover or something, do something else, but he's, he's G'ing up here, he's feeling it. Yeah, maybe they're thinking the bear bomb. As I think you're right. Mark Quinn planted down hard by Bear Bronson. Bronson now very slow to get up. I'm not sure this is the best idea, Taz. No, I know, he was trying, though. Uh, gotta give the man credit, he was giving it a shot. Oh, he, he got rid of, well, they're gonna do this. The Bear Bomb by Bear Country. Oh, wait a second, Isaiah Cassidy comes off the springboard cutter. That was impressive, that was impressive. Boulder just ate a drop kick to the face and now Isaiah Cassidy over the top crashes oh. down on Boulder. Oh my God, jeez, what the hell? And the shooting star pressed by Mark Quinn. Two, three, Private Party steals it. Winners of this match, Private Party. Well, Private Party scoring the win here tonight in our opening contest, Taz. Yeah, no, let's take a little look how how it happened and what happened here. It was, uh, it was pretty wicked. See right here, caught a beautiful right there. Bronson led from so high, and then that shooting star press by Quinn. And you gotta understand, too, uh, Bam Bronson was injured during this match with that leg, so it's tough for the guy to kick out, man. Good match, though. Good match, a good win by Private Party. Last September. 40,177 AEW fans are here. History was made in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night, what a scene. On Wednesday, September 21st, oh my God! the U.S. Open's signature venue in Queens opens its gates yet again for the experience of a lifetime. AEW Dynamite and Rampage Grand Slam is back. Singles action coming up next here on AEW Dark. Captain Sean Dean goes one-on-one -on -one with Conan Lycan. Contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. 
Introducing first, from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 201 pounds, Captain Sean Dean. You heard Sean Dean was in uh, the new Top Gun, right? I think he had a compartment, uh, like a long talk compartment. I, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I'm, I'm oh, yeah. interested to hear about that. Yeah. Is it a big, uh, big spot? Yeah. I'll tell you about it in a little while. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can't wait for it. I mean, that was a very energetic uh, jaunt to the ring there by Sean Dean. Very athletic man. And his opponent already in the ring from Albany, New York, weighing 260 pounds, Conan Lycan. Well, speaking of New York State, nice transition there by myself. Well we'll be done. making our debut on September 7th in Buffalo, New York at the Key Bank Center. And then later in September, AEW's Grand Slam returns to Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens at the Billie Jean King U.S. National Tennis Center on Wednesday, September 21st. Tickets for both events go on sale next Friday, July 22nd, 10 a.m. Eastern at AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Yeah, good side headlock by Sean Dean. It's, I'm impressed with Sean Dean, man. He's able to, you know, combat component uh, opponents here in AEW and right here on Dark and and take a guy like this big Conan guy. Right now he's in trouble, Sean Dean, but I think he'll turn it around. Look at this leapfrog. That's impressive, Sean Dean. Yeah, leapfrog and big arm drag. Oh, and he could do this while, oh, look at that drop kick was perfect from Chicago's own guy right here, Sean Dean. I'm just saying, being in a movie like Top Gun, like with, with actors like Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly, Miles Teller, Sean Dean, John Hamm, Craig Powell. It's crazy. Oh, God. Like it just. What the hell? Oh, God. Like it up to his feet. Wow. Wow. I'll tell you that. And, uh. Oh, Conan Lycan goes face first into the uh, into the steel ring post. Taz, do you happen to know the total runtime of Top Gun? Top Gun, um, it's, I know the budget on the movie was like 170 million. The runtime, oh, okay. yeah, it was definitely over an hour. I know that. <laughs> most most films are. Well, yeah, but Sean Dean said I'm not I'm not working past two hours in the movie industry. That's what he told them. The captain, he's gonna fly. Uh oh, he got caught. He got caught much like uh, like Goose did. That's oh, Conan like oh. it. Oh. And the, the far leg hook, Sean Dean kicking out. Well, big man from Albany right there. Driving the captain into the mat. Wonder what Tom Cruise would think of that. Huh. Well, Taz, we were talking about Albany. You know, New York is a state, and you know what else is a state? Georgia. And we'll be back in Georgia tomorrow night for AEW Dynamite kicking off. Fighter Fest at the End Market Arena in Savannah, Georgia. Great seats still available. And then next Wednesday, return to the Atlanta area in the Gas South Arena in Duluth, Georgia. That's Wednesday, July 20th. Tickets available for both events right now, AEWTIX.com. You know what else is a state? Maine. Yes, it is, Taz. Oh, look at that. Are we, are we headed to Maine, or are you just like... Well, uh, you're pointing out states, so am I. I don't know, it's far up there. Oof. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I was looking at far. a summer home in Maine. Nice, well done. Must be nice to make the millions you make. Here we go, <laughs> Captain. Millions of pennies. <laughs> Captain with that short close on running back elbow. I'm trying to call cool the match, sir. I'm trying to do my job. I'm doing play by play. I'm not even a play by play <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I'm over here counting my money, Taz. So come on. Oh, DDT by Sean Dean. The captain, like a true movie star, baby, with all those stars on his legs. Chicago's own, bro. Windy City Jones. Here we go. John Dean hyped up in that corner, yeah. and now the three-point stance leaps into the shoulder tackle. Nice Takes job. down Conan Lycan. The cover, and oh, Conan Lycan able to kick out. Hey, he got in that three-point stance. Lefty, Lefty Jones fired out right there in that three-point stance really well. Good football background for Sean Dean. Played for a short time for the Minnesota Vikings. Tried it for the Jaguars, they cut him. That's not true. The movie part's true. No. The football part's not. Yeah. We're just having a laugh here. Oh, Conan Lycan. Oh, yeah. Sean Dean's momentum against them. Plants of center of the ring. Big upset. Could be an upset, upset here. Whoa. That, that would have been an upset. Sean Dean really he showed good heart and good toughness on that kick out. He got his shoulder up the right way. Did not. He couldn't exert too much energy because he's hurting right now. And this Conan, this big man Conan, needs to keep on going. 
Conan Lycan out to the apron, taking a moment taking to too collect long. himself. A little too long, though, man. Yeah, and he's he's headed up to the top, perched on the top. What? Oh, 450, but he rolled through. But Sean Dean, flying drop kick by the captain, and now Sean Dean. He's headed up top, and the salute with the splash. Sean Dean, two, three. Winner of this match, Captain. Well, the captain, Sean Dean, much like his co-star, Tom Cruise, took to the skies and made a boffo B.O. Taz. That's boffo box office for you. I know you're not necessarily a Hollywood in insider, but Sean Dean getting his 12% of the gross off the top. Here with Rohit Raju, last time we saw you, you picked up a big win. I'm sure you'll want to continue your winning streak tonight on Dark. <laughs> Look who it is, the Omen Adonis, the mocha-skinned manimal himself. That's right, I know your Nimrods are probably thinking, who is this guy? What's this all about? But those of you in the know are thinking that it's about damn time. So allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ro. H to the IT, Rohit Raju, and AEW Dark is getting a little bit brighter, courtesy of I. And Baron Black, it's you and I tonight, and I'm gonna prove to you and the rest of the world why I am a walking bag of money. And when I'm done with you, you're gonna be a walking bag of pain and suffering. Because I am Rohit Raju, and my mother, she called me son because I shine like one, main Surya. Ooh. Tag team action right here. Check this out. Two members of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Daddy Magic himself, Cool Hand Ange. Tag team action against St. Patrick and Sage Scott. It's called hitting the time cue, son. Huh. Yeah. That's right, Excalibur, you heard me. The following contest <laughs> is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, representing the Jericho Appreciation Society, Daddy Magic, Matt Menard, and Cool Fan, Angelo Parker. I'll tell you, it's impressive, Excalibur, just to see these two men walking still after that blood and gut situation, that match on Dynamite was insane. Yeah, two weeks back, that blood and guts match, a night that none of us will soon forget, let alone Daddy Magic Matt Menard and Cool Hand Ange. We'll have more on that in a second back down to Dasha. And their opponents already in the ring at a combined weight of 375 pounds, Jake St. Patrick and Sage Scott. Menard and Parker, Taz, they were covered head to toe in blood. And oh, look at this. The blindside assault there by Angelo Parker and Matt Menard. And, you know, speaking of blood, Taz, the second night of Fighter Fest next week on AEW Dynamite, July 20th, will be brought to us by Discovery and Shark Week. And on that night, Wow. It is official. Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho will meet in a barbed wire death match with the Jericho Appreciation Society banned from ringside and suspended in a shark cage. Wow. Tandem DDT. And the cover one, two, three. Winners of this match, the Jericho Appreciation Society. Test. Not just. A shark cage, a shark cage, and a barbed wire death match. Uh, I mean, it's just that—that's must see TV, must see TV, dude. Can't wait. God, we're gonna be right there. It's gonna be nuts. The Jericho Appreciation Society, huh? We don't get paid by the hour. Not Statement by the victory. Hour. Statement victory. No doubt about it. Where you want to taste? Where you get it? Huh? The five huh? star. Symbol of excellence! Excellence! Where you at, Giovanni? Well, coming up next here on AEW Dark, the infectious, and I mean that in the most positive way possible, Willow Nightingale in action next.
Many have called me infectious. That's what I thought. Then they said, no, you're an infection. <laughs> I meant her positivity is infectious. <laughs> I know. The following contest is set for one fall with a total wet team, minute time limit. Introducing first from Long Island, New York, weighing in at exactly the right amount, Willow Nightingale. Well, Nightgale, we've seen over the past few weeks, she's uh, gotten gotten close with Chris Statlander and the and uh, Athena, the fallen goddess, and uh, yeah. Taz not 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 a bad pair to align yourself with in the no, AW. No, no, it's a great pair to align yourself with for sure. Willow Nightingale's real good. I mean, her music from like 1982. And her already in the ring from Long Island, New York, Mila Moore. Steady diet of. Uh, Girls wrestling tonight from Strong Island, Long Island here. Interesting. There's a boat, you know, Long there's a boat Island. that, yeah, the boat that goes from Long Island here to Orlando. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it comes, comes straight here. It's, uh, Just and then it actually here. turns into the uh, the Jurassic Park water ride here at, uh, at Universal <laughs> Studios. <laughs> well, before this match gets too far underway, I want to remind everybody that Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, pay-per-view event coming up Saturday, July 23rd. The Ring of Honor Pure Championship beyond the line. Wheeler Yuta defends against the Jericho Appreciation Society's Daniel Garcia. Plus, it is official. Samoa Joe will defend the Ring of Honor World Television Championship against the longest reigning former champion, Jay Lethal. Tickets for that event are on sale right now at ROHTIX.com and AEWTIX.com. And then, right after that, AEW will be in Worcester, Massachusetts, making our debut at the DCU Center on Wednesday, July 27th. Tickets for that event on sale at AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. I'll tell you right here, Willow Nightingale, she has really been putting a lot of offense on this young lady here, but nice boot. Trying to stop the momentum here of Willow. Yeah, Mila Moore driving Willow into the uh, the top turnbuckle and follows up the boots and the pump kick by Mila Moore. Caught Willow right on the jaw. Good job by Moore right there. Now get on her there. That's it. That's it. That's smart. Be aggressive. There could be some Long Island issues here. You never know. It could be a Nassau County oh. versus Suffolk County thing. We're not sure. Willow. Cartwheels out, lands the NZ Geary and the clothesline. A second one. Willow showing off her power. Giving Mila Moore some trouble here. And oh Willow just scooped up Mila Moore and planted her. Yeah, showing the strength. Yeah, yeah. Now you guess she's she's I think she's getting ready to finish more off here. Yeah, Willow looks like she might be trying to kick it into high gear, has the gut wrench, looking maybe for the doctor bomb, but no, Mila Moore, knee to the midsection, and now Mila Moore, the backstabber on Willow Nightingale. Mila has got her covered, just a two count, though. Well, that came out of nowhere. I didn't expect Moore to do that, but it was really well done, and it definitely slowed down Willow Nightingale in that momentum. What a slap. Ooh, but... That seems to have fired up Willow Nightingale. She's got a look on her face as she comes by with the pounce. Oh. Misdirection, body shot right there, that pounce. Straps are coming down here. And yeah, Mila Moore trying to retreat to the corner, but that might play right into Willow's game plan. That cannonball sent on in the corner. And Mila Moore in serious trouble. Willow looking for the gut wrench once again. Dr. Bomb. The cover and the win. Winner of this match, Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale scores the win with the Dr. Bomb, improving her 2022 dark record to a perfect 2 and 0, oh, Taz. Yeah, no, it's impressive. You see Willow, she's very proud of herself, very happy. She should be very jovial dancing amongst all of us here in Orlando and very happy and peppy and bursting with joy. Yeah, and that know, guy's a Braves fan. I don't like Braves fans, damn it! <laughs> I don't like the Braves! Why did we shoot the guy on camera with a Braves t-shirt? Sorry, outburst. All right, we got a one-on-one -on -one contest right here. We got Baron Black going one-on-one -on -one with Rohit Raju. That's happening right about now here on dog.
number 152. 152 Excalibur, can you believe it? You made it to 152, kid? Wow. Couldn't, make, couldn't believe we made it to 150. The following contest <laughs> is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, weighing in at 187 pounds. His mother calls him son because he shines like one. Raju. It's an interesting hometown. His mother calls him son because he shines like one. Is that near Albuquerque? <laughs> <laughs> it's by Walla Walla. All right, now I know where it is. <laughs> Flex Jones. Actually, I think that was a real guy, Flex Jones. His opponent already in the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 218 pounds, Baron Black. Tell you what, Excalibur, Baron Black does not look too impressed at uh, Raju. The look he gave him was like, uh, I don't like you, and I'm going to knock you out. So. Yeah, very, very dismissive look on the face of of Baron Black toward Rohit Raju. Kind of reminds me of uh, like when Alex Marvez walks in the announce room, the look you give him, you know? <laughs> oh, damn, Taz, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Taz? Uh, AEW will be making our debut uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan for AEW Rampage and Battle of the Belts 3 at the Van Andel Arena on Friday, August 5th. Tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. And then the following week, we'll be returning to Minneapolis, Minnesota and the Target Center on Wednesday, August 10th. Tickets available at AXS.com and AEWTIX.com. And the week after that, we're gonna have a huge August. We will be making our return to West Virginia for the first time in nearly three years for AEW Dynamite and Rampage at the Charleston Coliseum in Charleston, West Virginia on Wednesday, August 17th. Tickets for that event on sale, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Cover there, right there. Good roll up by Baron Black, yeah. Oh. Oh. Ooh, the Manhattan drop followed by, by the discus lariat. Looking forward to going to West Virginia. Haven't been there in a long time. Hey, well, it's a real easy place to get to if you're not from there. Really easy. <laughs> when we were there in 2019, there were two Uber drivers on a constant back and forth loop between the hotel and the airport. I hope, hope they've added some capacity in the last three years. Oh, I'm packing my 10-speed bike. But Raju <laughs> right now, he's in control. <laughs> oh, Baron Black shots to the midsection. Elbow strike to Raju. Raju. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, the elbow backing up Baron Black to the corner. And now the reversal into the ropes. Baron throws the lariat. Raju ducks under. Nathan flattens Baron Black. And oh, right to the back of the head. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, powerful Larry to the back of the head. Far leg hooks. Baron Black able to kick out. I think he took that move from someone, but I'll, I won't go there. Uh, but he did a good job on it. Don't, please don't prod me. Please. I know you're going to. So. No, Taz, Taz, I was just going to talk about how Fighter Fest, the four-night pro wrestling party kicking off this, uh, the, the biggest four-night pro wrestling party of this summer, kicks off tomorrow night, live 8, 7 central on TBS. The triple or nothing match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. The Young Bucks have to defend against Swerve and Our Glory and Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Claudio Castagnoli and Jake Hager go one-on-one, -on -one, as do Anna Jay and the professor, professor of professional wrestling, Serena D. Plus, we'll hear from Chris. Christian Cage and Luchasaurus will be in action tomorrow night. Fighter Fest, night one on Dynamite. Loaded tomorrow night in Savannah. And right there, Baron Black taking Raheem Raju right down. That last shot was that big strike, uh, big chop, I should say. Oh, Raju comes in. Baron Black, step, behead, uh, step behind. And now, oh, Baron Black just gut wrenched up. Raheem Raju, and he planted on Baron. Oh. Baron Black floats over into the crossface, Taz. Yeah, tough, tough hold to get out of. Guys, all of his weights on back, you pulling a nice cradle, though. Good counter into that, that reverse cradle, but a good way to break out of that hold. A nice knee strike, a rising knee strike, I should say. Yeah, Raju caught Baron Black in the middle of the discus motion, right on the jaw, and now Raju. Oh, the running boot in the corner. Now Rohit Raju. Cannonball sent on. Raju must be watching his Willow Nightingale matches. Yeah, as, yeah. Oh, Brody King. <laughs> right? Raju 
The diving stop right on target. The cover and the win for Rohit Raju. Winner of this match, Rohit Raju. Got the win there, impressive fashion. Baron Black put up a good fight. It was close, but Rohit got the win. Yeah, it was a good back and forth battle. But ultimately, Rohit Raju scored the victory here tonight on AEW Dark. Congratulations, Rohit Raju. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, the South African Submission Specialist and Helico in action next. We, we need to lay out. All right, we need to lay right, out so we can hear this. The positivity, I'm vibing out. Get a hand to the task and then I'm riding out. No stopping, keep your eyes locked in. Always the first choice, never the second option. Oh my God, this is a revelation. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. So, we were both a little taken aback as this expression goes. Oh, damn it. Look who's rough in this thing. I didn't realize that. I don't know shit, damn Remsburg. But anyway, I was a little, and so were you taking them back because I love the old and Helga song, but I gotta tell you, I think I love this one more. And his opponent already in the ring, Logan LaRue. This, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm completely blown away by this presentation, Taz. This is unlike, really, I mean, this is a walkout song unlike anything we've ever heard in pro wrestling. Still doing it. He's just loving <laughs> Angelico. It's my guy, man. He's my guy. I love this guy. You know that. Well, Angelico's tremendous. And Taz, actually, I, I, Angelico put something up on social media last week, and it was about how he I don't he even had... think I follow him. Hold on. Do I follow him? Sorry. Uh, I hope you do, because... I love this guy, but I don't follow him. Hold on. Yeah. I think I follow him. Sorry. Well, what happened? So, he, he talked about how he had a private training session with Negro Navarro, one of the best Yave uh, technicians in all of Mexico, Me Mexican submission wrestling tech, uh, technician. And he had a private training session with him where they focused exclusively on stand-up grappling. And can, can you just... Uh, you know, basically break that down and just tell people what the importance of that is. Oh, it's super important. I mean, if you can, once you master stand-up grappling, stand-up wrestling, some, you know, in the UK or back in the day, catch is catch, you know, chain wrestling style, it's everything because you're, the key is to get your opponent down on the ground, but how do you do that? You have to master stand-up first. So that's kind of like in Helico with Navarro, going back to his roots to, to, to Remaster that. It's very smart of him. Very good job. And you see right there just how fluid and Helico is bringing Logan LaRue down to the mat and using his opponent's momentum against him in doing so. Really, really efficient economy of movement there by Angelico. How do you spell Angelico? A N G. Uh, a N G. Oh, it's right here on my on my, my pay, on my sheet. I got my whole script that I use. <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, everything you hear me say, I read a script. Yes. It's all a script. None, none of this is ad libbed. Everything is very, very, very tightly produced here on AEW Dark. Absolutely. That's a tight hold right there. Look at this. That break the guy's spine. Logan LaRue forced to carry Angelico's weight, and Angelico converts into a pinning predicament. LaRue able to kick out, breaks free of the grip of Angelico. And just like to remind everybody in Ohio, we are making our debut in Columbus, Ohio at the Shot and Scene Center at the Ohio State University on August 3rd. Tickets on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. And we'll be returning to the Wolstein Center in Cleveland, Ohio for the last time in 2022 on Wednesday, August 24th. Tickets available for that event right now, AEWTIX.com. Well... I got some bad news for you. Nice drop step to go behind there by Angelico. A little bad news. Hold on, I'll get to it. Standing switch here by LaRue. And another switch by Angelico. Trying to sit through to break the grip. I got some bad news for you. Hold on. It's still bad news. That's another is it, switch. Is, is that the, these There's guys keep on exchanging waist locks? Yes. 
Yes, once the switch is stopped, I'll tell you the bad oh, news. Look at that elbow. Wow, good job, Angelico. Nice striking blow. Hey, let me taste this. <laughs> Swing and a miss by both men. Roundhouse kick avoided by Angelico. The sweep, the lariat avoided by LaRue. And LaRue comes in with the flying forearm. Yeah, LaRue now is locked in. Angelico's got to be careful here. Are you Amateur waiting for the, the bad corner, news? Do you even give a rat's ass? Do you want to know? I, do, I, I was waiting for you to drop it in, so I started calling the match. <laughs> LaRue, oh, the spear! And now the near leg hook by LaRue, and Helico kicks out. What's the bad news, Taz? I'll get to it in a second. Hold on. You see LaRue now trying to get some momentum here. He's looking pretty good, Excalibur. I'll tell you that. LaRue charges, and oh, to the floor. That extra momentum really rocked Angelico, and now Logan LaRue up to the top rope. LaRue, oh, uh -huh. the uh -oh. drop kick. Uh-oh. Intercepted. And now the Navarro death roll by Angelico. Logan LaRue is trapped and will have to, no choice but to tap out. Good job, my man Angelico. So the bad news is I don't follow Angelico. I thought I did on the but Twitter. But, but the good news is No, no, there's now. more bad news. There's more bad news. Oh, no. And Helico doesn't follow me. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, wow, that's disrespect. So now what happens is... Wow, what a revelation. Is, right, now me being High Row Jones. Why is Bryce Rensburg trying to have rhythm and dance? Damn it, Bryce, just get out of the ring. I follow in Helico. You and Helico, let's see what you do now if you follow back me. Because that's how I judge it. I'm going to put people on blast on the show next. From going forward about social media, if they don't follow me, I'm going to call them out. Did you see that picture with the uh, Negro Navarro, though? That's a cool shot. I did. That's very cool. Very cool. Not as cool as this cat. Here we go. One on one matchup the factory's Nick Camarado against you know who. The high flying, dangerous Dante Martin. The law still still roll. I'll get into that. Seidel's in the corner of Dante Martin. Here comes Camarado of the factory. The following contest is set for one fall with a total weight team minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by QT Marshall and Aaron Solo, representing the factory from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 289 pounds, Nick Camarado. Nick Camarado headed to the ring to take on Dante Martin. Dante Martin fresh off of victory last night on AEW Dark Elevation over J.D. Drake, another very powerful competitor. Be interesting to see if uh, Nick Camarado has taken anything away from that match. And, you know, developed any strategies to counter the high-flying offense of Dante Martin. And his opponent, accompanied by Matt Zydell from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 205 pounds, Dante Martin. Get one step closer here, Excalibur, that this young man, Dante Martin, is going to end up in the Brooklyn Federal Court with my law team and me and all of my friends as we sue him because he breached his contract when he was part of Team Taz for about, I don't know, a cup of coffee. Remember that? Huh. I, I do remember that. It was uh, a little bit ago. Uh, but, you know, have you ever considered uh, getting smart Mark Sterling as your legal representation? Because he almost had Swerve Strickland. Hey, cut his music uh, real quick. Out of the I got oh, something wait, to say. QT. I said I have something to say. We heard you, Marshall. Yeah, we're standing right here by you. Don't you Come people on. want to hear what I have to say? Luckily, I don't give a crap what you people want. Dante. Uh, mindful of the monetization. I told you once and I'll say it again. Man, you have so much potential. He does. What an upcoming star Dante Martin is. But you're listening to a guy that preaches Matt Seidel is not boring, and I'm going to get to that. Matt, you're always preaching peace, love, and pro wrestling, and even this idiot knows that's all a bunch of crap. So, Dante, good luck tonight. And, Matt, 
I want you to watch what a real coach does. Oh, oh, that Nick Camarado. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the blind side shot by Camarado. That was smart by Camarado. Talk about how close Mark Sterling came from getting Swerve Strickland uh, yeah. removed from the roster here in AEW. Swerve Strickland not removed from the roster, and he'll be a part of Fighter Fest coming up tomorrow night live at 8, 7 central on Dynamite on TBS. Swerve will team up with Keith Lee to take on Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, and the AEW World Tag Team Champion, the Young Bucks, in a triple or nothing match. Plus, Claudio Castagnoli and Jake Hager go one on one, as do Anna Jay and the professor of professional wrestling, Serena Deeb. Plus, we'll hear from Christian Cage and Luchasaurus will be in action tomorrow night. And then Fighter Fest continues this coming Friday on Rampage. Private Party take on the Lucha Brothers and the Ring of Honor World, uh, World Championship match. Jonathan Gresham with Tilly Blanchard in his corner takes on Lee Moriarty with Matt Seidel and his, but Seidel's other protege, Dante Martin, now just getting bullied by Nick Camarado, Taz. Beyond bully, he's getting battered, beaten badly by Camarato is Dante Martin. I mean, it was just a barrage of every object out here in this arena getting this young man smashed into. Look at the power here of Nick. Camarado returns Dante Martin to the ring. Not the way uh, Dante Martin is typically accustomed to. And now Camarado pulls over the top and just comes down. That's a lot of weight to crash on Dante Martin. And the cover here. It's not easy either for a man the size of Nick Camarado, really thick, dense muscularity and a lot of hair to able to fly in the air like that. That's, that's not an easy task. You hear the crowd here at AEW Universal in support of Dante Martin, but Camarado sends Dante hard into the turnbuckles. I'll give you an airplane analogy. So Dante Martin is a Learjet, as we know. He's a Learjet where Nick Camarato, he's like a 767 jumbo jet. You know what I'm saying? We travel a lot, you get it. We both travel. Okay. I, I was thinking, you know, that uh, Dante more of a SR-71 Blackbird, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Okay, Hold on, yeah, let's try. One, two. Well, then we could go, uh, if you want to go more in the aquatic world. Uh, Dante is like a cigarette boat. I don't think that's the actual name, but you know what I mean. Um, sure. And uh, Nick Camarado was like just a big cruise ship with the uh, like, factory like a logo on the side. A, yeah. a tugboat or a freighter or something. Freight, a freighter, yeah, he's a big man. Big. So not, oh, oh, look at that. Aaron Solo with the cheap shot. Hey, the, wow. like it or not, that was, that was quick and smart by Solo. And, I mean, and look, you, I, I'll you tell gotta, you, the, let me, oh. please let me say this, Excalibur. I just want to get one word in this whole episode. I can't even get a word in. Uh, just one word, Excalibur, just one. So I, I'd just like to say the statement. The disrespect of this Dante Martin. This is why I don't like this guy. Look at the, the nerve, the audacity to wear the factory's colors when he's wrestling the factory. Huh? That's a, See, that's Seidel. That's, that's my Seidel doing that stuff. That's why. That's a, that's a fair point, Taz, but, you know, and I mean, you have to remember that, you know, the, the factory, QT Marshall, he's been going around offering people to, to mentor them, to train them. Oh, what a neck breaker. By well, Nick Camarado. You know, if if you don't, and if you do get trained by the very talented, great coach that he is, uh, you know QT Marshall, and and then you have a problem or get over, he gets mad at you, and then he wants to fight you. So we've seen that in the past too. And QT Marshall does not take it kindly. I mean, QT, I think in his opinion, he believes that he's being magnanimous. He's being the bigger man, offering these competitors to. To train, but you know, I mean, we've seen Dante Martin. I mean, Dante's challenged for the AEW World Championship. He's, he, you know, he's an exceptional competitor. And oh, as he floats over the sunset flip attempt, but Camarado brings Dante up to his feet. What Fight I'm saying, back Taz, hard. He's just keep. What, what are you saying, sir? Please tell me. Is, is that maybe Dante yourself. doesn't need QT Marshall and QT's influence? Oh, right Whoa. about now, I think Dante needs a lot of help because Dick Camarado was manhandling him. But to the point you are making, hold on, the point you were struggling to make, but I digress, is that is Dante doesn't need QT Marshall. I, 
and I don't know. I mean, I know he respects Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel is a tremendous, world-renowned competitor, respected throughout the world, as we know, in locker rooms everywhere. But Dante is so damn talented, man. He can stand on his own, but he's getting guidance from Seidel. So I don't think that's horrible. Hey, he breached the contract with Team Taz. That was a big mistake, because we're about to see two members of Team Taz as the World Tag Team Champions tomorrow night in Savannah, Georgia. That's right, AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest, night one, four of the biggest pro wrestling nights all summer. Coming your way starting tomorrow, live at 8, 7 central on TBS. As Dante Martin fighting up to his feet, attempted the hammer throw into the corner. Nick Camarado puts the brakes on that, though. The big power advantage, as we've po been pointing out for Car Colorado, there's that quickness, and Dante's so good at countering with. Dante throws the elbow strike. Camarado is charging in, eats a couple of shots from Dante, and Dante laying in rights. And oh, but the knee strike to the midsection stopped Dante in his tracks. Yeah, that was a well placed knee and big thick thighs of, of Camarado. Oh, Nick got stopped again. Watch out here, this is where Dante's at home. Dante diving, cross body. And his momentum carried him off Camarado, and Dante crashes down on Aaron Solo. And Dante owed Solo that. And Dante trying to keep his mind, or keep his eyes on all the members of the factory, but right now, on target, the missile dropkick takes down Camarado, no. No, Excalibur, you're right, that was on target. Best way to put it, but it still wasn't enough to defeat Nick Camarado. And Nick Camarado struggling to his feet. Dante waiting for him. The roundhouse kick drops Nick Camarado back down to the canvas. And Dante springing off the middle rope. The crossbody oh, attempted. No. Camarado, now the fireman's carry. And oh, the neck breaker. Death Valley neck breaker to no. Well, look at that. I really feel like maybe a year and a half or so ago, a move like that from a man as big as Camarado would have beat Dante. Dante's come so far at a young age, able to kick out, shows his toughness. Dante Martin is having a tough time getting his legs underneath them. One more shot like that, no matter how tough Dante is, could be the end of the night. Nick Camarado, oh. Thinking maybe the water wheel drop, but instead, Dante grabs it to the ropes. The back elbow staggered Camarado, but Fireman's carry once again. Uh -oh. Again, yeah, again. The neck breaker, no. Dante, whoa, the Casadora, the roll through, the hook of the win. The winner of this match, Dante Martin. Well, we saw how quick that happened, and here it is, the counter. Super tight roll up when you're as big as Camarado, it's tough to kick out of that. Very small. Oh, look at this. After the bell, QT Marshall throwing a shot on Matt Seidel and Nick Camarado inside the ring. Keeping up the punishment on Dante Martin. I mean, that was a great high wrestling IQ move by Dante Martin to score the win, but this is just a brute force assault by the factory. Yeah, the factory is ticked off. QT Marshall has. These two men ready to, uh-oh, what, what? Fuego. Fuego del Sol with the chair in hand, coming to even the odds on behalf of Dante Martin and Matt Seidel against the factory. Well, Fuego's got a weapon in hand, so let's go. We'll fight you guys right now. And QT Marshall showing no appetite to get in there and mix it up with Fuego and the chair. But nonetheless, Dante Martin victorious tonight on AEW Dark, picking up his second straight win in as many nights here tonight on Dark. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Got it done, though. We're going to save the day for these two guys. The factory was getting ready to finish them off. Yeah, Fuego Del Sol and the chair intervention for Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. I don't like where the factory was headed, but yeah, congratulations to Dante on the win.
after winning the AEW All-Atlantic Championship at Forbidden Door, the Bastard Pack now looks to make his first defense of the title against New Japan Pro Wrestling Shota Umino. Well, from Tokyo, Japan to Sheffield, England, Taz, this has been a globetrotting edition of AEW Dark. Oh, yeah, we were in Universal earlier, too. I'm so glad you bought that jet, that two-seater. You let me on it, man. It goes so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, there would be no possible way we could be live and in person at all of these events. But we pull it off thanks to your jet. Here we go. There is the man that will be the first challenger for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship, Shota Umino. Fans were introduced to Shota at uh, our Forbidden Door event last month, and really, Taz, one of uh, the clear fan favorites. Yeah, Death Rider. Yeah, no doubt, De definitely a, a fan favorite. People love his style, they love his, his vibe. He's a talented, talented wrestler for sure. But he's going against somebody who's got a brand new championship, brand spanking new. And the gentleman uh, that showed is going to face is right here in his home country. That's right, Shota, Shota Umino, the protege of John Moxley. John Moxley's moniker in New Japan Pro Wrestling, the Death, Death Rider. That is the significance of that jacket that Shota's carrying. And uh, Moxley, if, if, if you're somebody that has earned the respect of the interim AEW World Champion, John Moxley, you've got to be a pretty tough guy, but Shota Umino is going to have his work cut out for him. Not only are we uh, just down the road from uh, here in Sheffield, from, from PAX hometown of Newcastle, but as, as you said, this is the first time that PAC will be defending that AEW All-Atlantic Championship, which he won at Forbidden Door. And you, we've already had one upset tonight that Taz Pack yeah. is not going to, I don't think he's going to allow for a second one. I agree. Well, this man, the, the bastard pack, as you know, Excalibur, he is, uh, you know, I don't know if we want to go top five, top eight in the world. I mean, I, I don't think anyone could argue that. He is that just amazing in, the, in between the ropes for a long time. And he had a salvation for him. You know, what, what a homecoming here for Pack. In Sheffield is there you see the AEW All-Atlantic Championship, which Pac won in that four-way match at Forbidden Door against Miro, Malachi Black, and Clark Connors of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And so Pac now making the trip across the Atlantic to defend that title for the very first time. Well, you know, when you have a brand new championship, I think it's uh, very important that whoever is crowned that first champion, male or female, it needs credibility on it. And a man like Pac, an athlete like Pac, brings a plethora of credibility and ability and talent and uh, style points, all this stuff. Years of you know, being a champion basically everywhere he's been. That's how good this cat is, man. He's amazing. Yeah, Tess, you know, I mean, while it's been it's been great to watch the matches between the House of Black and Death Triangle over the past few months. It's it's really, I think, I think more interesting now to see Pac in this situation where where he is a champion. He's kind of fulfilled his destiny here in AEW, and now he's going to be going traveling around the world defending that All Atlantic Championship. Yeah, no, I know, and and, and that's the thing with um with a championship, and especially if you're gonna. If you're gonna bring this thing, if you're gonna bring it across, you know, all over the world, I mean, it just, it really uh, makes it special. All Atlantic Championship, AW, there's our first ever champ. Uh, let's see what happens here in this match. Let's throw it down to the ring announcer, Francesca Oliver, for the introductions of the champion and challenger. Fans here, the network in Sheffield, very supportive. We thank them for their patronage.
Great atmosphere here for this first AEW All-Atlantic Championship title defense. And fans may be wondering why Shota Umino, a competitor from New Japan Pro Wrestling, is in England challenging for this title. Taz, can you talk a little bit about the the, the dojo system in New Japan yeah. and then the, the, the philosophy behind the excursion once you graduate the dojo. Yeah, once you graduate, you go on these excursions, go to different parts of the world, stay there for some time, no matter if it's the United States or if it's in the UK, uh, wherever it could be, just to build experience and learn other styles from foreign lands. And I think that for many years in Japan and professional wrestling, their dojo system, not just New Japan, I, uh, I, I agree with that, I do. Especially years back when there were more territories, especially in the United States or Calgary, you know, Bret Hart's family, you know, Stu Hart uh, and all that stuff, you would see a lot of great Japanese talent end up over there back in the day um, on excursions. Uh, you could go on and on at Excalibur, you know, with, with great wrestlers from Japan that were on excursions when they were young. Yeah, I think some of the most well-rounded wrestlers uh, in, in Japanese pro wrestling really embraced the, excur the excursion system that really embraced the style of, uh, of wrestling in that you know was the dominant form wherever they went and nice shoulder tackle there by pack and and those wrestlers oh, oh Shota wow. Umino comes back with an elbow strike nice shot ah uh, you heard Umino say come on bastard <laughs> I love it good stuff good fire by the young man there yeah. Yeah, we got the shooter and the bastard here in our main event on AEW Dark. And now Pac and Umino on the outside. Shota sent into the barricade. But, uh, you know, the, the point I was, was going to try to make was that the, the most successful wrestlers in Japan seem to be the ones that are best able to marry the Japanese style with the style of their excursion, whether, you know, it's in Europe or Lucha Libre in, in Mexico or, or maybe even multiple locations. Yeah, uh, you, you, you just diversity in your style. Oh, there's going to be a big, big chop, I think, coming here right about now. It's Calvin. I got a funny feel. Oh, maybe not. Pack full. <laughs> no, it's going to be a yeah. hammer throw across the ring. But there's the power of Pack on display. He is an incredible athlete, the bastard Pack. And, you know, I, I mean, his reputation precedes him everywhere he goes. Show to Umino knew that he was going to be walking into a fight here tonight. Yeah, for sure. And you see Pat kind of have a little fun with uh, the live audience here. But don't you worry. <laughs> he knows. He is zoned in on his opponent. And that was a full body slam right there by, by a very powerful bastard Pac. Okay, Pac now heading looks to be up the ropes. He is taking his time he's letting umino return to his feet under his own power and if if i've seen one oh shota tried to take pack off the off the roast pack the shoulder to the midsection and now falls off the back of umino and comes in but shota oh oh i like it and the diving uppercut there by shota umino and there's that that european influence on shota sure thing you know we hear wrestling here for the young man from Japan right there, and he really caught Pac with that running up a cut forearm. And Sh Shota Umino has been in the UK for over, over two years competing, and oh, Pac went hard into that barricade. I think Pac's throat actually came down on that, that top rail. Yeah, and that could really just knock your voice box for a loop. I've, I've had it happen to me. Our cameraman just got a little banged up there. <laughs> Shota Umino taking pack all around the network here in Sheffield. And Shota is somebody that, that the UK fans have, have really embraced since he's been on excursion. And so I'm not sure that, that pack has much of a uh, home field advantage as you, you would expect in a match like this. Oh, Tennessee. I agree. I, I feel like <laughs> Shoto Umino is, is loved here more than Pac. <laughs> Pac's from down the road. And 
Now showed up on the apron. Comes over DDT. Plants the bastard. Showed up covers. And Pack able to kick out. That was close right there, but Umino thought he got the victory, but uh-uh, not so quick. The All-Atlantic champion, Smart, getting out of the ring, trying to slow the momentum down of Umino. Yeah, it, to, to slow the momentum down, to stem the tide against you, Pack doing a good job putting some distance between himself and his opponent, but Shota Umino will not be denied returning the bastard into the ring, and Pack again. Oh, man, that, you know, I think, yeah. Getting tossed into the barricade and then followed up with the DDT. Pack, you know, Pack may have a, a neck injury. He may have something here that, right. you know, unfortunately for him, cannot maintain a good poker face. Yeah, and, and getting in out of the ring for him, people think, ah, oh, it just saves you a couple little seconds. Nah, it's very important, those few seconds. But right there, now baited in Umino, and Pack has some control, it looks like. Yeah, Pack digging the thumbs of the eyes and. He did so, importantly, Taz, on Umino's return into the ring. Umino let his guard down for a moment, and now the bastard pack exploiting it. Getting an earful from the, the official here as pack just the boot on the ear of Umino as Umino's throat across the bottom rope. Well, he's basically telling the referee, hey, listen, I'm the champion. You're not just going to disqualify me here. I got a five count, and I'll utilize every second. And now the Snapmare center of the rink pack drops the knee across the mouth. And now the, the headlock bringing Umino down. And Taz, Pack is one of the quickest men. He's one of the most fleet-footed wrestlers I think I've ever called, but he could slow it down and he could use his power to grind out a submission victory. We've seen both sides of the bastard. Yeah, you're right, and he, and he does a great job of it being a hybrid. Uh, having that uh, explosive speed along what insane power, which we're seeing here with a strong rich, rear chin lock on the jawline, completely jawline of Umino. And Umino pops the hips, scoots the hips to the bottom rope to force the break. And Pack taking every moment of the five count for the clean break, or not the clean break, but the five count for the break, I should say. And yeah, you see Umino is just laying there lifeless, just about. Oh, oh, he's stepping on his head again. <laughs> Pack is just driving the, the heel into the into the back of the head of the challenger, Shota Umino. Oh, damn. Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, those, he's getting his head. Yeah, those kicks to the head will knock you senseless, Excalibur. You know that, man. Those things, they suck. That hurts. Yeah, the, the, it's the shots you don't see coming that are oftentimes the most dangerous. I like the rhythm right there of the old, Atlanta, of the old Atlantic champion, very smooth. Pack once again driving the boot to the side of the head. And just a reminder, AEW Dynamite. Coming your way live, 8, 7 central tomorrow night on TBS. The first night of Fighter Fest. We've got a huge event on hand. We will hear from Christian Cage and Luchasaurus will be in action. Anna Jay goes one-on-one -on -one with Serena Deeb. The Claudio Castagnoli and Jake Hager will collide one-on-one. -on -one. AEW interim world champion John Moxley will face Kanosuke Takeshita in an eliminator match and Triple or nothing for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. The Young Bucks put the titles on the line against Swerve in our glory and Powerhouse Hobbs and Absolute Ricky Starks, all of that and so much more. 8, 7 Central tomorrow night on Dynamite live on TBS. Pack booked to the midsection, stops Shota in his tracks. Shota reverses Pack into the ropes and a nice back elbow. He's not done. Oh! A good explosion there by Shota Umino following up with the drop kick. I think Pack was uh, lulled into a false sense of complacency and, and showed it now, taking advantage on the champion. Yeah, good stuff right there. You're right, the champ is rocked. He's getting to a vertical base, but he's definitely rocked a bit. Showed it, breaks the grip of Pack and now fires in two, now three uppercuts on the bastard and the hammer throw to the ropes. Showed it. 
charging in. Another uppercut there. And Shota Uman, no. Backdrop. And hangs on to the wrist of Pack. Oh, look at this, Taz. Yeah. Almost. He's, uh, he's got the, the, the right arm of Pack neutralized with the legs, and now the, the double wrist lock on there. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that double wrist, that key lock version of a, of a wrist lock on the left arm of Pack. Pack nowhere to go because his upper body is immobilized. He uses the bottom rope to break this hold. Very good submission hold utilizing your own legs and upper body. And Shota Umino now feeling confident. I think he could feel the momentum shifting in his favor. But as we mentioned, this is the first defense of the AEW All-Atlantic Champion. Pack is not going to go down without a fight. Yeah. Shota Umino. I think it's really cool, too, that's being defended here in Sheffield in the UK. And, 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 and uh, you know, could you imagine? And it definitely could happen if Umino becomes the champion and beats Pack right here in his home country. Yeah, that would be a huge upset on a broadcast. We've already had one huge upset as Shota Umino laying oh, in the he's elbow doing a little bit of macho style. See what he did that day? That's the influence yeah, on Yeah, he did. Yeah. And now Shota Umino closing the distance. The drop kick sending Pack into the barricade. And you know that our interim AEW World Champion, John Moxley, got to be smiling to watch young Shooter Give the All-Atlantic champion so much trouble. And now Shota, missile drop kick off the top rope. He's not done yet. Fisherman suplex, the hook is in. Whoa, that was close. Yeah, good job on the kick out by the champion. And now you got to try to follow up here. Umino, keep on bringing that offense. Pressure, put pressure on the champ. The crowd here in Sheffield divided right down the middle. And showed up. Maybe oh, he's trying to trying to bring Pack up, but instead Pack gets low. It can show to Umino outpower Pack. Oh, oh, the soul but landing. It was smart by the champ oh. to drop to need to prevent the lift that uh, Umino was trying to do, but these kicks are brutal here. And Pack, a single leg drop kick, the heel of Pack's boot colliding with the side of the head to show to Umino. That same head that we saw Pack kicking and stomping on earlier. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, a physical, physical battle, but we can expect nothing less. And also, I'd just like to mention a thank you to Revolution Pro in the UK for hosting this match, the first challenge of the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. And Pack, a drop kick of his own, takes down Umino. Explosive might get him. Just a two count. And Tez, you know, a, a missile drop kick, a shotgun drop kick are, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an impressive technique it's a very effective technique but when you're somebody with the leg strength of pack i mean he's got massive quads he's got massive hamstring and and it just puts so much more power into those kicks yeah because uh, his core strength too man he's explosive and and you saw in that missile drop kick just exploded through the body of umino it's like a chorus singing gimmick broke out here so we'll just lay out i guess He's a bastard. He's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pack, after uh, after that rousing rendition of "He's a Bastard," showing showed to Umino how much of a bastard he is. Those kicks to the side of the head, but Pack, you know, he can't afford to let Umino back into this match. Playing with him, the All Atlantic champion is playing with the challenger right now. A little hip check there by Pack. Come on! Showed up. Umino! The elbow strike to the jaw, but oh, Pack, man. 
that elbow, you saw the knees of Umino buckle. Yeah, Umino not 100%, but he's showing a lot of heart here. Yeah, he is standing toe to toe with Pack, but Umino taking a moment to gain his footing. Winds up and laces in an elbow strike to the jaw, but Pack immediately responds. Shota maybe making a mistake, trying to stand toe to toe in exchange with Pack, but neither man willing to give ground. And Shota, wow, now Shota gaining the upper hand. Shota charges in, Pack, oh! Beautiful snap. Talk about lulling yeah. somebody. Lulling somebody into a false sense of security. Yeah, that snap German Great suplex, snap. but he's up. He's, Umino's moving. Oh, well, he was moving. Yeah, Pack caught him with a kick across the jaw. Umino lifted up Pack. The knee strike on the way down. Enzi Kiri there. And now the thrust kick by Pack stops Umino in his tracks. And uh oh, uh oh, oh boy. Ah. Shota Umino just, I mean, that was that was a crunchy. That was right out of Trent Barretta's playbook right there. That's exactly what I thought of was Trent. And Umino, somebody that in his, uh, in his training spent many, many hours at ringside observing, uh, you know, from really the best seats in the house. And you pick up influences, you pick up techniques like that and Trent is somebody that that competed a long time in New Japan Pro Wrestling and his influence is shown right there on Shota Umino. Both guys here, both athletes are down. Got to try to get up. Someone's got to get the advantage. I got to tell you, Pack seems like he's in a lot of trouble here. That all Atlantic yeah, title this, could be in trouble. This is not looking good for the the bastard, the AEW All Atlantic Champion as he's pulling himself up to his feet, the assistance of the ropes, but again, the thrust kick on target. And Shota Umino just crumbled. Well, you heard that impact, man. man. Oof. Uh-oh. Now Pack headed up to the top. Oh, maybe Umino lured him in, and the drop kick, the top rope Pack sent tumbling. And now Shota Umino launches off the top rope, the DDT, he hangs on. And now Umino, the brain buster, center of the ring. The cover, two, no! Super close, you can see Umino's frustrated, he's pissed. Thought he had him. Now show to Umino with Pack, drops him down, the hanging reverse DDT, the cover. Again, Pack able to kick out. Well, Umino putting the pressure on the champion right here. He's smart. He's hitting high impact offense, rapid fire. I like it. Shota Umino drawn on the support of this great crowd here in Sheffield, but he needs to apply more pressure to the champion. Pack is so, so dangerous. And now Shota looking for the Death Rider, but instead, Pack able to avoid it and lands the pump kick across the jaw of Umino, but Shota comes back. Now Pack rolls through, crucifix counter there by Shota. Two, oh, very close. Super duper close. Double underhooks here, oh, nice counter. And the crucifix attempt by Pack. Oh, he's, oh. Oh no, instead. Wow, that's a lot of pressure from standing. Shows the power of the limbs of the All-Atlantic Champion, Pack, And Pack cranking on the neck of Shota Umino. But Shota now dropping to a knee. And Pack, he's got the challenger fading. Oh, he's got him. That is in so tight. Yeah, you got to tap and out. Shota taps out. Wow, the bastard Pack successfully defends the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. What 
a title defense. Shoto Undo has nothing to be ashamed of, man. That young man put up a hell of a fight. Yeah, tons of respect for Shota Umino, but even more respect for our All-Atlantic champion, that man, the bastard Pat. Like, once again, thank Revolution Pro in the UK for hosting this All-Atlantic Championship match. And tomorrow night, Fighter Fest kicks off in Savannah, Georgia, 8, 7 Central, live on TBS. John Moxley, Kanosuke Takeshita, AEW Interworld Championship Olympics match, Claudio Castagnoli, Jake Hager, one-on-one, -on -one, plus triple or nothing for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Join us tomorrow night for Dynamite Fighter Fest. Tomorrow on TBS, it's the start of the epic two-week event. The Clash of the Titans, here we go. Don't miss Fighter Fest week one. A three-way tag team title match. You guys versus you guys versus the young boy. Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS. Hi, everybody. It's Tony Shimani, and welcome to the AEW Fighter Fest Control Center. Now, this week, be sure to join us for the biggest party of the summer, as tomorrow night on TBS, we began week one of Fighter Fest with AEW Dynamite. Tomorrow night's event originates from Savannah, Georgia, at the new Enmark Arena. We will take the air at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. For our fans coming to Savannah tomorrow night, come early. The matches for you begin at 7 local time. Tickets are available at AEWTIX.com. On the Fighter Fest card from Savannah, one-on-one, -on -one, Jake Hager of the Jericho Appreciation Society will meet Claudio Castanoli of the Blackpool Combat Club. This will be a collision of two of the biggest and the best in the world, and two who were part and on opposite ends of the incredible Blood and Guts event a few weeks ago. Also get ready for a big triple or nothing match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship as the Young Bucks, the champs, defend against both Swerve and Our Glory and the team of Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Three of the hottest teams battle to see which team reigns supreme in AEW. The Young Bucks have been the champs since June 15th when they dethroned Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, thus becoming the first two-time AEW World Tag Team Champs. Speaking of Luchasaurus, he'll be back in action at Fighter Fest from Savannah weeks after he sided with Christian Cage. Additionally, we will hear from Cage live on TBS. What will this egomaniac have to say? Speaking of egomaniacs, we'll also hear from Chris Jericho on TBS. The last time we saw him, he was leading an attack on Ruby Soho backstage. Also on the card, Serena Deeb will battle Anna Jay. We know Deeb is set to go after Mercedes Martinez and the ROH Women's title at Death Before Dishonor on July 23rd. But Serena has a big challenge standing in her way in Georgia's own, the star of the show, Anna Jay. This is all coming your way tomorrow night on night one to begin our two-week Fighter Fest live in Savannah, Georgia at the Enmark Arena and on TBS beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central as part of AEW Dynamite. We have more great matches to announce for Fighter Fest live on Dynamite on TBS. Wardlow is the new TNT champion. The big man has had as big of a year as anyone in pro wrestling. He won the Face of the Revolution ladder match and he finally became All Elite at Double or Nothing. Now last week on Dynamite, Wardlow fulfilled all of his dreams at this point as he won the TNT belt. Now Wardlow says he's going to be a fighting champion and that anyone who deserves a shot will get one with the open challenge for the TNT championship. The first to step up and accept the open challenge, Orange Cassidy, a man who is not only ranked in the top five, but one of the most successful wrestlers in AEW's history. Cassidy is coming off a big win this past Friday against Tony Nese on Rampage, and another big win the week prior on Dynamite against All Ego Ethan Page. Cassidy is also tied for most wins of any singles wrestler in AEW history without a championship. And for someone not known to be motivated, Orange Cassidy has some extra motivation here. He was out for over three months following injuries, suffered in the face of the Revolution ladder match, a match that was won, as I just mentioned, by TNT champ Wardlow. Get ready for Wardlow against Orange Cassidy for the TNT title live on TBS from Savannah as part of night one of Fighter Fest.
But that is not all. At Fighter Fest Night One, live from Savannah, only on TBS, we'll see an AEW Interim World Title Eliminator match as John Moxley will meet Kanosuke Takeshita. If Takeshita wins, he earns a guaranteed world title shot against Moxley. This is a match Moxley wanted after Takeshita's incredible showing last Friday on Rampage against Eddie Kingston. Well, Mox, as you know, is very beat up after the past few weeks, including blood and guts and a hard-hitting successful defense against Brody King a week ago. How much did all that take out of him? Kanosuke Takeshita is a young, talented athlete with impressive wins in AEW and around the world. AEW values him as a future star, but will not sanction him in a championship match coming off a match against Kingston, because in the end, Eddie won the match. Moxley saw something special in Takeshita, and he wants him in the ring at Fighter Fest. John Moxley's on a roll with 17 straight wins in singles competition. How about that? It's John Moxley and Kanosuke Takeshita at Fighter Fest, live on TBS in an AEW interim world title eliminator match. Plus, a few more things to discuss. A lot of strange things transpired in the past weeks between Sting and, in particular, Darby Allin and the House of Black. We'll recap and address that on Dynamite on Fighter Fest. And fans, get ready for a big announcement of the next AEW pay-per-view event. That announcement and how you can get tickets will be unveiled on AEW Dynamite on Fighter Fest, live on TBS as well. All right, fans, this Friday, our two-week Fighter Fest continues on AEW Rampage on TNT, beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. On the card, as it stands right now, a match for the Ring of Honor World Championship as the champion Jonathan Gresham defends against his former friend and partner, Lee Moriarty. Also this Friday in tag team action, private party of the AFO with Andrade El Idolo and Jose at ringside will collide with the Lucha Brothers with Alex Eberhantes in their corner. And we will hear from the Gun Club about why they turned on the acclaim last week. It's coming your way this Friday at Fighter Fest Night 2 on AEW Rampage on TNT, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. Okay, fans, in two weeks on AEW Dynamite, it's Fighter Fest Week 2, and we'll be in conjunction with Shark Week. We have one incredible match signed thus far. It'll be Eddie Kingston facing Chris Jericho one-on-one -on -one in a barbed wire death match. And the entire Jericho Appreciation Society will not only be banned from ringside, but they'll be suspended in a shark cage. Now, this match and many more next week will be part of AEW Dynamite on TBS Week 2 of Fighter Fest. This event next week will originate from the Gas South Arena in the Atlanta area in Gwinnett County in Duluth. Tickets for Week 2 of Fighter Fest in Metro Atlanta are available at AEWTIX.com. Also, the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view is set. It is Death Before Dishonor and will originate from the Sungus Center in Lowell, Massachusetts on Saturday, July 23rd. Tickets for this event are now available at AEWTIX.com and ROHTIX.com. Four, count them, four title matches already on tap, plus much more to come. At Death Before Dishonor, Samoa Joe will defend the ROH World Television Championship against Jay Lethal who you know will have Satnam Singh and Sanjay Dutt with him. In what should be a tremendous battle for the ROH Pure Championship, Wheeler Yuta defends against Daniel Garcia. As we alluded to earlier, Mercedes Martinez is set to defend the ROH World Women's title against Serena Deeb. And then in the most anticipated rematch thus far in 2022, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions FTR will defend against the Briscoes. Also, the Gresham Moriarty world title match on Rampage. How will that affect Death Before Dishonor? We're going to find out very quickly. And one very important note. Tickets to this Saturday's AEW Dark Tapings at Universal Orlando are now available. But make your plans right now. We'll be live from Savannah, Georgia at the Endmark Arena. For our fans in Savannah, tickets at AEWTIX.com.